Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Kristen, and I'd like to welcome you to another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Um, and uh, welcome you to this conversation. Welcome to Fashji and Rosemary and Amelia and the other guests that are logging in and listening. So, uh, welcome to this to this program. Before I start, I'd like to thank Amelia Santara and her family uh, in Ireland and from the Kingdom of Kerry in Ireland for sponsorship of this show. I would like to thank Eileen Laurel and and uh, uh, Ed, whose last name will go un, un, unnamed. <laughs> I'd like to thank Glenn Ola uh, and Eileen Laurel for, for their assistance and help in bringing this information uh, to the many people uh, who would who would be called to receive it? Uh, some other areas of exploration for this information would be Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one dot com. So that's Kundalini Awakening Systems one dot com. Uh, you can get the information there. You can also go to uh, Chrisum Kundalini on YouTube. That will take you to about uh, over 250 videos. Uh, specifically uh, about the Kundalini. You can also go to Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Yahoo Groups or Kundalini Awakening uh, uh, um, exclamation point at uh, Facebook as well as Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 on Facebook. So welcome everyone and today's topic uh, is going to be about spiritual modalities. Uh, religions, spiritual understandings, uh, practices such as Reiki or yoga or, or uh, you know, Vipassana, things of that nature, so, and, and how they uh, integrate uh, with Kundalini. Um, before I do so, I believe Santara would like to make an announcement. Hello, Santara. Hello, Kristen. May I say, first of all, that I'm having difficulty with um, the chat room. I'm just, I got a new app, but it's just not I, working. I can, I, can so see, not... I can see it. I can see it fine, Amelia. On your on your okay. iPad, it's gonna it's gonna be difficult. Yes. Well, I just to let you know that, so I won't be able to help there. So what? Um, yesterday I wrote on the Yahoo group um, that the donate button there on the main Kundalini Awakening website has not been functioning for quite a while due to circumstances beyond the control of cars. But the donate button that I refer to here each week is not that one. It's the one that is on Chris's blogspot page, and that donate button is up and running. And the address. Um, is ascension hyphen kundalini dot blogspot dot com and if you go to the top right hand side you will find the donate button and this is really a very easy and a very safe and efficient um, way to donate and as I always say please know that there is no requirement to donate and there is no pressure to do so however donations are accepted with love and gratitude for the support they provide directly to Chris and himself and indirectly to everyone his teachings reach. And, you know, teaching about Kundalini and offering support and information is Chris's full-time work and sacred work that graces and supports people all around the world um, that are in the Kundalini awakening process. So I'll give you that um, again if you are in a position and want to um, make a donation. The address is Ascension, A-S-C-E-N-S-I-O-N, hyphen, kundalini dot blogspot dot com. So that's it, Chris. I'm looking forward to the show. Thank you, Amelia. Um, and, and just so the folks in the United States understand, uh, in Ireland they pronounce A as A. So she's, you know, she's saying A S C E N. Uh, S I O N uh, hyphen uh, uh, Kundalini at Blogspot and Blogspot is spelled B L O G S P O T. Um, okay, so let's get into this. Uh, all paths of of a human spiritual exploration lead to Kundalini. All paths. 
um, you know, starting, you know, from the basic primeval shamanism and, and you know, the, the incorporation or the ingestion of light-bearing plants to, to you know, your most modern, um, uh, you know, we'll just use the Crystal Cathedral there in, uh, in Orange County, Los Angeles. I mean, to your, mod- your most modern televangelist uh, experience. And touch my hand and be saved. Uh, this all, this all relates to Kundalini. It all goes to Kundalini by whatever name you call it. Just as Shakespeare said, uh, a rose by any, any other name will still smell as sweet. And enlightenment or Kundalini by any other name will still do what it does to an individual. Call it anything you want. I know that you know the Christians like to to call uh, you know something of, of, of the magnitude of a Kundalini awakening, well, the the blessing of the Holy Spirit, things of that nature. You know, I got no problem with that. That's all good, and the, you know, and the, you know all the various uh, you know in in the Amazon basin, it's the the awakening of the red serpent energy. You know, and, and, and the many, many, any any culture, every culture on this world, uh, where the human beings within that culture have a spinal column and a spinal cord, they will have a name for the kundalini that is dormant at the uh, at the beginning of the spinal cord, which is the uh, the cossacks or the tailbone. So please. Uh, I'm going to ask you to expand your understandings, expand your levels of belief uh, to incorporate the fact that we are given a multitude of choices to explore our own spiritual dimension, our own inner dimension. And, you know, some people will walk a Christian path, some people will walk a Hindu path, some people will walk a shamanic path, some people will walk an Islamic path. You know, there's so many different paths to choose from, um, but they all eventually, eventually they lead to Kundalini, and uh, within that context, the Kundalini is is uh, is all inclusive, all inclusive. Now, you know, this isn't to say that the that the uh, language within the books or the doctrines of these many belief systems will agree with kundalini many of them won't but you know that's just that's just a reflection of the doctrine not a reflection on the kundalini okay people people in the in in one sort of religious uh, affiliation won't even like the word kundalini it doesn't sound like it's something that they're familiar with i mean you know they just, you know, they just won't be comfortable with it. It would, it would have to be, you know, a, a name or a word that comes from within the the, the uh, definitions of their belief system, such as the Holy Spirit in Christianity. Um, but Kundalini is pervasive. It is in everybody's spine. Therefore, based upon that person's karma uh, and their current belief system, will the Kundalini begin to refine their soul experience to the degree that they can have it in this life and express through it in this life. And so many people say, I'm just going to use the Christian as an example right now, they use, uh, they use many different formats. Uh, Philip St. Romain, you know, he's a, was a very, very staunch Catholic, and uh, he wrote a book called uh, Christ, uh, Kundalini and Christianity, I believe is what it's called in. And I'll suggest you read that book. It's a good book for those of you who are, who are, you know, very, very strong in the in the Christian belief system. And the Hello, everybody. It looks as if Crimson has actually gone offline for a moment, and um, hopefully he's going to come back again. Um, oh, now the other person's actually going online. I'm not sure if I can actually be heard or not. 
So I will just go on now. Oh dear. The studio has disappeared as well from my... Okay, I have no idea if I can be heard or not. So I will continue on and hopefully Krita will come back again. Um, what am I going to talk about? Um, let me see. Um, the last time this actually happened, I think what I did was I spoke about the um, the safety. So maybe I could do that again. Um, I actually don't think I think I've lost. I don't think I'm live on air at all. Good morning. I keep pressing the button here, continue, keeps offering me to end the episode. And I, if we get cut off, and... Um, hey, hey, hello, hello. Oh, you're I'm back. back. I don't know why I got, I got cut off somehow, some way. Uh, stay online, Centaur. Actually, I stay online, um, yes. Uh, yeah, okay. so just hang on a second. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I don't know what you were saying. Um, I'm calling from a different phone because my cell phone has been disconnected so I'm on this landline using a calling card so if I get disconnected Centaur you just continue the conversation with your own experiences okay okay I, is that I all right that. Centaur I yeah thank that's you fine. that's fine yeah okay where I left off uh um, and, and I may get cut off again, folks. I'm sorry for this problem, but it is it is the reality of the situation right here is, is for me to use use this this mechanism for for what we're doing here. And so if I do get cut off, then Centaur is just going to step right on in with her own experiences. And feel free to call in. The the guest call in is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. You're going to hear some birds in the background. That's because Barb here has a. Uh, oh jeez. <laughs> yep. They all. They're all saying hello. There's kind of a rescue uh, sanctuary here for the for animals, and, and she's got turtles and birds and dogs and and a cat. And uh, anyway, so you're going to hear them in the background, and, and I hope it's not too uh, uh, distracting for you. Uh, just a second here. Anyway. So with the religions and the, and the different practices, uh, it's going to have a definitive effect upon the Kundalini. And I think I was talking about Philip St. Romain. Um, Philip St. Romain is a person who was, a, as I mentioned before, a staunch Catholic. And he, you know, he started really getting involved in his belief system and, you know, praying and uh, you know, all the time and going to church during the week, not just on Sundays, and really getting into it in a very, very sincere, strong fashion. And his Kundalini awakened because of that. And I'll leave you to read the rest of his story in his book. Um, and uh, once again, the n title of his book is uh, Christianity and Kundalini. And uh, you'll, you, you may find it uh, fairly informative. Uh, with regards to uh, any of the religions, if you practice a form of spirituality that is strong and and sincere in the way you practice it, well, then you too may have the the Kundalini awaken. And typically, those that have it awaken within the within the practice of their of their spiritual their you know their chosen spiritual belief system. Uh, they will they will connect it to that belief system, and there is room for that. Jesus, Mary, God, Holy Spirit, apostles, Bible, they can all be seen within the the uh, context of Kundalini. 
you know, Jesus, sacred male, Mary, sacred female, Holy Spirit, divine energy. Okay, apostles would be equal to saints or, 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 or students of the divine male and female. Um, apostles and, and people in general can be seen as the sacred children. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of room for people to, uh, to move within the kundalini, within their chosen belief system. Um, Santara? Yes, Chris, I'm sorry for the time delay. It's, it's the iPad, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the iPads, yeah, I totally understand that. Um, I'm not at my computer, so if you have a, a caller with a question, please feel free to interrupt me, okay? Yes, I will. Does that mean you're not seeing the chat anymore? I'm not sitting in the kitchen because of the amount of noise from the birds. Okay, so just once they know that in the chat room that you won't be, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So those of you in the chat room, if you have a question, um, call call into Santara and, and you know ask her the question or just call into the show and ask me the question. The number, once again, is 347-934-0026. Three four seven nine three four zero zero two six and hello Tim Ashworth, good to see you. Uh, looks like Tim is writing a question. So here I am in the kitchen. Forgive the bird noise, and let's see what you got there, Tim. Uh, I'll just continue while you're typing your question. With regards to any belief system. Uh, the kundalini is of a divine nature, and so any belief system that postulates or or works within the, the realm of the divine, the kundalini will shine through. Uh, um, you know, if I do get bumped off, and I, <laughs> I can't tell you that I won't, uh, Amelia will come on, and she'll kind of give a, a bit of her experience from a Catholic, an Irish Catholic point of reference. And uh, how she has been able to to experience the Kundalini and find balance within the Kundalini with with her upbringing as a as a uh, Irish Catholic person based in Christianity. So, but if you if you have a Buddhist background or a Hindu background or an Islamic background, all of this comes under the purview of the Kundalini. Actually, all of life and the expressions of life of a human being come under the purview of, of, of kundalini. We are all spirits in this body, and you know we're consciousness in a body. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever seen a dead person. I've seen you know, my fair share of dead people, <coughs> and um, it literally looks like a, a, the, the body of a person looks like a puppet that has just you know, nobody's holding it by its strings anymore. It's just lifeless. It's just like a a glove. You know, and in, in some cases the glove is new, some cases the glove is old, but it's just a glove without a hand in it. It's a piece of clothing that nobody's wearing. That's how a body is when it's dead. It, you know, except for your emotional attachment to the to to the person, uh the body is really a vehicle or a glove for the soul or the spirit to inhabit. And so as we gradually uh, evolve our way back from a dependence upon materiality and physicality and the dense physical expressions of spirit in matter or in density, uh, we, we, we really begin to, to move our way back into spirit, back into, our, you know, the divine truth that, that we all are uh, as unique points of, of spiritual consciousness. Um, the, the religions and the modalities of, of uh, belief system on this world simply serve to help us evolve. And so, and so you know, practice your religion. Be happy with your religion. Know that if you look 
strongly enough within your belief system, you will find opportunities to understand and and uh, uh, find balance within your Kundalini awakening experience. And this includes having all the kriyas and all the entities and all the thoughts and all the mood swings and all the physiological phenomena, spiritual phenomena, energetic phenomena that comes with the Kundalini awakening. Now, some belief systems may not cover those aspects. And, and because they don't cover it, because they don't know about it, they, they label it as being evil. Not evil. Okay. It's just that they don't know about it. And because they don't know about it, therefore, uh, they don't understand it. And what they don't understand, they tend to fear. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, Tim is asking a question. I would particularly like to know how to distinguish between a kundalini awakening and plain old depression. Also, what does having a kriya indicate? Uh, kriya indicates that the uh, kundalini is is moving uh, unasked for uh, and unaided by the conscious mind. It's moving itself through the body, uh, such as... Uh, Okay, well, it's up to happen to me there, and Chrism has got cut off, so I will continue. And um, Chrism has asked me to talk a little bit about my own experience. So, as he said, I was raised um, in the Catholic tradition. In our house, you know, we prayed a lot. We went to church regularly, not just on Sundays, you know, we went to church um, during the week, um, during special um, religious Time, such as Easter, we went to church quite a lot actually, every day, could be every day for a week. So I was brought up in an atmosphere of prayer and devotion and there were ceremonies in the church called the devotions and we went to those too. And I suppose when I was a child, you know, I before I became aware of church dogma or church rules, I was very much in love with God and um, God to me was real. I had, I think what would be called mystical experiences as a child and I can remember very clearly wanting to be with God and, you know, but not realizing that my parents would really miss me or put me back. Okay, uh, Go ahead and finish, finish, finish your thought, Amelia. Finish your thought. Okay, okay. I was just saying, so, and um, realizing that my parents would miss me, but that relationship with God and with the divine began within the context of um, a Christian Catholic upbringing. I will continue, Chris, then, if you get caught off again. No, that's okay. I want to answer Tim's uh, question. Um, sorry about the, the disconnect there, uh, Tim. I don't know why this phone's disconnecting. It's but I've never used it for this show before, and, and it's much easier with the cell phone, but that isn't working. So uh, the depression aspect of it is uh, depression will feel like depression. You'll have negative self-worth. You'll, you'll, you, know, you won't feel happy about life. You won't feel about happy about a lot of different things in general. Kundalini can expand that if you focus so much on it. And, uh, and so the difference between just plain old depression and kundalini enhanced depression is that level of enhancement. The level of enhancement can be quite strong. And so uh, you're going to need to, you know, anybody would need to make any kind of a, of a change in how they're uh, spending their time. You know, are they getting outside? Are you breathing? Are you feeling? Are you allowing yourself to experience uh, gratitude, are you allowing yourself to experience forgiveness and love and, and tolerance and patience? You know, there's there's nobility within your experience, but you just have to find it and you have to explore it to find it. You don't just get depressed and then have Kundalini back it up with a big amplification and then sit down on the couch and go, oh, geez, what the heck? I mean, sometimes we'll do that. But but, you know, for the most part, uh, I will suggest that you get up and get out of the house, get into the environment, and begin to 
to understand that this is just an amplification. It doesn't mean that that uh, that your depression is to be overlooked. What it does mean is you need to to discern the level of ampli amplification that the kundalini will bring into it. I hope that helps. Uh, it looks like I'm still connected here. So, yeah, uh, with regards to, uh, and, and I'd like to say hello to, to Bruno Amadori. Hello, my friend. Nice to, to see you here. Uh, with, uh, with regards to these belief systems and the kundalini, and you can expect me to be cut off again. It's happened too many times now, so... Uh, thank you, Amelia Centara, for jumping in. Um, and anybody, feel free to call 347-934-0026. Uh, with regard to some of the more overt, shall we say, uh, interactive spiritual disciplines such as uh, Tai Chi, uh, Qigong, all the way up to and including Reiki and, and even reading tarot cards or palm reading or things of that nature, that uh, these are good. These are good. Reiki, because of the entity interaction, uh, not so good. But I, you know, not all Reiki people have, uh, you know, reach reach their hands up into the clouds and say, "Oh, healing spirits of the universe, connect into my hands." If they do, well, then you know, you get out, you jump off that table. <laughs> don't let them touch you. Um, but if they don't. You know, and ask them before you you make the appointment. What do you do? Who are you reaching out to? Do you know what uh, spiritual consciousness you're 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 uh, working with? And if they can't say they definitively know what they're working with, then then I'll suggest that you don't work with them. But the other aspect of Reiki is it was developed by a man named Dr. Uh, Sui in Japan in the 1920s, and basically what he had was a Kundalini awakening experience. You know, he lived a very, very ethical, high moral life as an MD in the slums. And, you know, he would treat people for free, and they'd trade chickens or eggs or something, that you know, for him to get paid. And and uh, he did a lot of beautiful, good, kind, loving things for people throughout a 20-year, you know, over 20 years uh, in the slums uh, in that part of Japan. And one day he climbed up a mountain and he said, you know, I'm not going to leave this cave until I reach some sort of enlightenment. And three weeks later he he received the kundalini awakening which changed everything and and he didn't know what it was just like you know most people and he called it reiki which in japanese means life force and so you know this is you know he had a kundalini awakening and he was able to to you know do hands on healing and things like that and this this uh you know this 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 legacy that that he has left has become so commercialized, you know, oh, you know, get your Reiki mastership for thirty dollars and ninety nine cents uh at uh at uh you know Kmart Reiki Associates or whatever, you know. <laughs> Am I still here? Yeah, okay. Uh you know, Hello, this is Chrisum returning. Sorry about the uh the skip. This phone seems to have like maybe a ten minute delay, so I apologize. I see uh Bruno, you can continue the show. Yes, yes, yes. Um I don't know what happened to <laughs> Centara. Centara's not here anymore. But anyway, so so the Reiki thing become very, very commercialized and, and very, very uh, uh, steeped in greed and and ego and, and many of the things that cause that cause definitive uh, problems uh, within a within a Kundalini awakening experience and so thus thusly the Kundalini uh, healing or awakening there was a modification that occurred so that people reaching out into these areas would only get the lessons that they were able to metabolize. Many people who bought their Reiki masterships online and in other places, uh, you know, they didn't get the, the awakening, and they got to, to stick their hands up into the ethers and say, whatever, you know, tap into my hand and let me be a healer. And that was fine. That was fine. It, you know, it didn't... Uh, it didn't hurt them, so to speak, and and so they just moved on to it when it you know became the not the newest thing anymore, and they jumped on to 
you know, what, you know, you name it, uh, archangelology or, you know, some sort of a new, you know, type of uh, new age type of activity. Uh, so basically do do your do some uh research into uh, into a person who's doing reiki before you let them touch you okay uh the kundalini can be activated through reiki don't get me wrong i'm not saying that reiki is not a valid uh option it's it's maybe not the best option i mean unless you're really coming into reiki be, you know for the 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 desire to do healing upon people and not become a quote unquote famous healer if you're putting a lot of ego into it because you want to be a famous healer you know uh you want to be Edgar Casey of Reiki or something of that nature then then uh, you may you may discover some challenges within that ideology uh but other other modalities too uh you know tarot cards when i was early on in my process and i didn't know what the heck was going on I was working in a medical clinic, and uh, one of my one of my supervisors gave me a, uh, a a pack of or a deck of tarot cards, and I I didn't know anything about it, but I went ahead and learned how to do it, and I found out that I could do it very well, and it did give definitive answers uh, to what I was experiencing, uh, at least roundabout, shall we say, roundabout. Tarot is never, well, I shouldn't say never, but it's rarely is it totally definitive. Uh, you have to seek an interpretation of it, uh, and within within the you know certain certain uh, understandings of, of the tarot, you can uh, have some positive experiences with that. As far as uh, getting specific types of information that run the gamut of the mental, the physical, the emotional, the spiritual, um, I won't get into too much of uh, of the uh, the tarot, but I will. Uh, you know, suggest that you don't go for some of the like dolphin tarot, or not that it's bad. It's just, <laughs> I can't, I can't, uh, I can't support it because I don't know anything about it. But I do know that, like the Rider weight deck, or or the the deck that I got that I picked out for Amelia, that's a good deck. Uh, there's some good cards out there. Morgan Greer tarot deck is good. Uh, and this is this is for self inquiry. This isn't so that you can set up shop, you know, and say, you know, Chrisum Kundalini Tarot reader, past, present, future relation, you know, all of that stuff. This is strictly for self inquiry and for assistance for other people if they request it, and uh, if you're finding that you that you have a uh, propensity uh, for accuracy within it. Uh, some of the other things like the shamanics. Uh, shamanics, I'm going to include uh, uh, use of plant uh, uh, guides or light-bearing plants. Uh, this is another way uh, to get into the kundalini, but it's a little more dangerous if you don't know what it is you're ingesting. So, for instance, I will not suggest light-bearing mushrooms, such as uh, um, such as some of some that they're finding right now is. Uh, that is able to repair the brain uh, uh, from from a traumatic brain injury, um, and this would be the, uh, the 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 ones that they call. Oh, oh, okay. I've what happened the last time was that just before Crisen was cut off, I actually lost my phone line as well but although I was not on on air I could still see the studio and when Kristen goes off I keep and um, two buttons keep flashing up end episode or continue so I had to keep pressing those as I am doing now and in order to keep the show alive and I could not go and Skype back in again so that's what happened so I'm sure there was a horribly long pause when you didn't know if the program was over or not so hopefully I won't get cut off again. I don't know what's going on today. Sort of strange. I'm actually um, Skyping from Spain because we're on holidays. I'm on holidays here with John and my two youngest children. Um, so I don't know. Maybe that has something to do with it. I've never been cut off before. Um, 
As I was saying, though, um, I was brought up in a Catholic tradition, and around the age, somewhere between the ages of like 10, 11, 12, I began to become aware that there was dogma and rules and uh, within the church. And interestingly enough, even way back then, it was the rules that pertained to the Divine Mother, to Our Lady, that I had great difficulty with. Okay, Quentin. Hi. <laughs> Hi, what I'm happened back. The last I'm sorry time? about this, folks. No worries. Okay. What happened the last time was I got cut off just before you, so there was a big pause, I think, with nobody online. Okay. Okay. So, okay. And Go thank on. you, everybody, for your patience. Yeah, we're talking about psilocybin, Tim. Uh, I, I would not suggest people who are who are either going through the Kundalini or searching for Kundalini to use psilocybin as a as a as, as a uh, a plant helper because that literally has the capacity to blow blow your seventh chakra open and it's very 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 hard very very painful to have that happen and so you know some of these things I won't suggest now now if you're looking at ayahuasca which is a completely different type of light bearing plant actually it's a combination of of a, of a liliana vine which there are 17 varieties 17 known varieties of Liliana vine uh, in the Amazon basin, and they mix that with another plant called Chacruna, uh, and and the mixture, uh, the tea that comes from the Liliana vine and the Chacruna uh, is what forms the basis for ayahuasca. And this this uh, this is is definitely uh, you know it's. <laughs> It's a powerful experience. It's a very, very, very powerful experience. Um, and it will help you to activate your kundalini, if not activate you. Now, a lot of it's going to depend on how how you have lived your life, what kind of karma you have, what kind of determination you have, how strongly involved are you in self-discovery and willingness to see yourself as you truly are. Okay, with all your fears, your baggage, and your you know some of the some of the challenges that we we uh, have in life, and so you know this 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 requires a strong level of of, of honest integrity within it within an individual, and so depending upon that, will determine how far the ayahuasca will go in in bringing an enlightenment experience to you. But ayahuasca uh, is far preferable to psilocybin. Psilocybin. And even though there's no guarantee that anybody doing psilocybin will have the seventh, seventh chakra blow, uh, it's, it's happened, and it's happened often enough in, in my experiences with people having kundalini that I cannot, absolutely cannot recommend it. I can, however, if you really want to go that route, the short route, I can, I can suggest the ayahuasca. It's a class D drug, D as in dog, or D as in DEA drug in the United States. Uh, so you can get it in Peru, Colombia, Brazil, Ecuador, uh, s some of the Central American uh, countries. Um, it is, it is a way to go. It is, it is an option because it, it's also called La Perga, and because it's law called La Perga is 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 due to the fact that a person, if they're not dieting correctly before they take it, they're going to be vomiting quite a bit, and even after. You know, even for some folks, after you diet uh, correctly, uh, you, you, you're not vomit. You're, you're vomiting, but you're not vomiting fluids or substances. You're vomiting energy. And if you're able to see a person that's vomiting during an ayahuasca uh, experience, especially during what we would term as the dry heaves, well, you can see that they're actually vomiting energy, and it's the energy of. Uh, of issues that they need to be letting go. The, the, the ayahuasca is very strong, depending on how it's made, uh, but uh, it's, it's also quite effective in opening a person's eyes to who they are, how they are, what they need to do uh, as, they, as they evolve spiritually. So ayahuasca is very positive. There's never been an OD, an overdose of ayahuasca. Uh, I think the, the reason it's illegal in the United States is simply because uh, you know the powers that be don't really want us to know that much about ourselves. We, you know, the last thing they want us is to be self-empowered. 
And this moves me into cannabis. Cannabis is uh, is, is is experiencing a resurgence in, in North America uh, and Canada uh, in regards to its legality. And cannabis actually can uh, bring a person into a state of receptivity uh, within a divine practice. Um, yeah, and let me move into the other room here. I'm probably going to get cut off really quick. Uh, cannabis is not damaging. I just don't like the addictive aspect of it. I don't want a person to think, oh, gosh, you know, I haven't smoked a joint today, therefore I can't do my kundalini practice. You know, kundalini is not dependent upon cannabis. Cannabis is just basically a... a, a uh, it's 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 an entheogen that which means plant helper uh that Kristen is gone again. It's actually interesting to hear Kristen was mentioning earlier on, you know, about our different pronunciations and that, you know, I I would have said for Ascension A and he pronounces it cannabis, whereas here in Ireland we call it cannabis. So <laughs> to hear him going, cannabis is really, really weird for me. I think cannabis sounds much, much cooler. But anyway, that'd be as if, you know. Um, so anyway, I suppose there's no point in going all the way up through all the different things that occurred for me within the context of the Catholic Church. and um, But it was... Uh, a very good relationship that I had. It was one of seeking God. It was one where I was trying to balance all the time that which I was being taught, the rules, you know, what was, what was not, and that which I was feeling was not the case. You know, I I didn't go along with all of the teachings that I would have been given through my church. And so even though I was never seeking Kundalini, even though I never did meditation, even though I never did any of those those things, I was always seeking God. I was always searching for the truth. I was, you know, I prayed. I was in. Oh, oh hello, Chris, and you're back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Let's see from Tim. I think Chris was avoiding the voice detection algorithm of the government. No, 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 no. I wish. I wish this phone wouldn't shut off every 10 minutes or however long it is. So with, with the cannabis, uh, cannabis is, is, is uh, you know, I'm not against its use, and it doesn't, you know, we've got brain receptors that that uh, that are designed specifically for cannabinoids. That means that as the, uh, as the human, homo sapien developed, you know, in its hunter-gathering stages, it, that uh, cannabis was consumed, uh, consumed in, in however however ways the, the 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 early primate Homo sapien consumed it, and so there are brain receptors for cannabinoids within uh, within the human brain. So it's not absolutely foreign to our to our uh, to our beings. So you know, with that in mind, you know you can you can look at uh, cannab cannabis consumption. In in a light, that, you know that there's there's more safety to it than danger to it. I mean, it's it's a fairly common plant that millions of people are are using for recreational use, and uh, you know that's perfectly all right for Kundalini. It can well, what I can tell you about Kundalini and cannabis is that if you if you take cannabis and then you you look at the colors, the deep, rich, ruby red color, like a colored glass or a gem, and you look at that with the sun, uh, it, can, it can have an effect upon you. The same with the blue. And if you, if you have a, a, a deep, rich, ruby red, uh, a sparkly ornament or something of that nature that really gives you a, a high quality of red, deep red, blood red, uh, and then you look at that while you're on on cannabis then you can you can have an event that is that is deeply spiritual depending upon you and depending upon your karma as well it's not going to work that way for everybody but it has worked that way for some 
which leads me into to some things that people think are spiritual that are absolutely not, such as alcohol. Alcohol is the worst thing you can do to to t- to try to to get spiritual or to to activate your kundalini. Avoid alcohol at all costs. Uh, you know, and that's the one thing here in the states that's legal. <laughs> so, so you know, I mean, yeah, it's, it's like it's it's just not it, it's so so uh, silly. But anyway, so so stay away from the alcohol. Stay away from the tobacco unless. You can get absolutely pure tobacco, which I think uh, there's a brand called uh, American Eagle uh, that has no pesticides, no fillers, no none of the stuff that's, that some of the other cigarette companies put in uh, to it. And then you basically only use that for purification. You don't use that as a habit. It's a tool. It's like a screwdriver. You're not always carrying a screwdriver around, right, when you're in the shower or something like that. So don't do that with a cigarette either. Just use it as a way of purification, purification from entity contact, you know, for one thing. Um, I'm going to get cut off here pretty quick here, so please, please, just a a little bit of patience on here. Uh, I'm having problems with paying the phone bill, and and that's why my cell phone is, is, is missing in action today. I'm on a landline, and it appears this landline has some sort of a time delay on it, so... I get about 10 minutes, and then it's going to cut off, and I'll call you right back. It'll take me about 30 seconds, maybe 40 seconds, to call you right back. And uh, hopefully Amelia will step in if she can. She's on an iPad somewhere in the middle of the Mediterranean right now. So, I, And I noticed, uh, I, can see, I can see, Tim, your response, can abis, yes, 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 we can. <laughs> There's plenty of, plenty of room for that type of uh, humor. Uh, any of the other drugs, such as methamphetamine or heroin or any of those things, are absolutely not helpful. Uh, LSD, people have had kundalini awakening experiences from LSD. Uh, once again, the same story as psilocybin. If you want to blow the top of your head off and, and experience all the the uh, challenges that can come from that, well then, you know, LSD, psilocybin, those types of things, you know, are, are part of that. Uh, so there are plenty of entheogens within the shamanic cultures, but also let's look at the uh, the animal and the and the nature, the, the the closeness that a shaman is with nature is fantastically close. Whoops, Kirsten is gone again, but he'll be back um, <laughs> within a couple of seconds. Um, so okay, um, what was I saying? Um, oh, I'm gone blank. I can't. I can't remember. I think. Um, oh yes, I was saying how that I hadn't been seeking Kundalini. I had never even heard of the word, and um, for many years, actually, before Kundalini, before I had my Kundalini awakening event, I was within a Kundalini activation but I had no idea that I was. So all of the phenomena and the physical symptoms that people speak of and that we all talk about, I had an awful lot of those without having any clue what they were about. And somebody mentioned their depression and a lot of the, not so much craze, but a lot of the, um, oh, Christmas is back. No, well, I mean, finish your thoughts. Finish your thoughts. No, 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 no. <laughs> what? Continue, continue. Okay, all right. So, so yeah, any, any, thank you. Thank you, um, Bruno Amadori. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. I, I appreciate all of your, of your patience with this. I, I didn't expect this to occur. So, hey, Amy, it's giving us uh, time to, to reflect a little bit on what's being said. Any of the other drugs, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't recommend a, a drug lifestyle with regards to awakening the Kundalini, uh, but the, the, I can recommend the shamanic belief system. I can recommend uh, uh, shamanic and, and other aspects of shamanism that will work well uh, for the Kundalini. Uh, you know, everything from your plant, or not your plant, but your animal totem, 
to the different ways that the Shakti will communicate with the shaman. Uh, everything from the, the different levels of spirituality within a shamanic background. Uh, you know, when a, when a shaman goes uh, searching for a soul fragment, well, the shaman doesn't actually do that, but one of the shaman's power animals will do that. And these power animals can translate straight into a kundalini animal, and, and that shaman can be led into the kundalini path based upon that belief system. It's, it's not that far to go, and in many cases, in, uh, in, in shamanic tribe, tribal cultures, a person can't become a medicine person or a shaman for that tribe until they've had the kundalini. It's a priority. And so, you know, within that understanding, you can see that, uh, you know, kundalini is not the big, you know, mystery in, in some of these cultures that it is in the Western cultures. And so, you know, within that context, you can understand that, that shamanism is a viable option. It is a viable option. Now, that doesn't mean that you just, you know, you see the word shaman after somebody's name or before. Typically, they do it before, like it would be shaman chrism or shaman whatever. Uh, this, you know, shamans also come with a lot of entities. And, and um, I won't recommend that you just jump on board of any shaman that, that you know, comes through your town. Uh, you be careful, be, be discerning. You know, just because the shaman is a shaman doesn't mean that he has any more spiritual information than you do. Um, by, by the fruit shall you know them. And so understand that and realize that. And, and don't just, you know, give over seniority of your body to, to, to the first shaman that comes to town. You are responsible for your body, and you need to really understand that within a kundalini context. Uh, and which, which moves us into things of, say, the Sufi. The Sufi have a very clear understanding of Kundalini within within their belief system. A very clear understanding, and um, you know when they're spinning like a whirling dervish spins, uh, they're activating the first chakra. They're they're doing the things that that uh, that will bring a Kundalini uh, awakening experience in a positive venue. You know, we look at the Sufis and we look at the level of love. Look at, look at uh, uh, you know, some of the poetry of Hafiz, H-A-F-I-Z, uh, or Rumi. Rumi was a Sufi, okay? Uh, the level of love that's espoused within a, within a Sufi context is tremendous. It's a wonderful way to come into the Kundalini through the, through the Sufi understandings. And yet, you know, a lot of the Sufis are affiliated with Islam, you know, in Islam at the moment, because of of uh, Western media, has a has a bad reputation to, for for many of the people who who aren't Islam. You know, the the, the media tends to uh, compete religious uh, belief systems against one another in order to justify you know wars or whatnot. But uh, but you can look at Sufism as a form of Islam that is love based and absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful uh, for men and women, although, of course, it's still patriarchal, which is a problem. But uh, as, as, uh, as the race matures, uh, we can get out of this patriarchal uh, conundrum and begin to expand uh, in an equal way towards men and women uh, within a spiritual context. And uh, so I will strongly, you know, I, I'm, I'm a very big supporter of Sufism. I went to a Sufi thing this year, and uh, and yeah, the, you know, it, it's very good. It's a it's a it's a positive way to look into the Kundalini, and I'm going to get disconnected pretty quick here. It looks like, uh, so I will be right back. Okay, well, it looks like he's getting some used to this and um, being disconnected. It's very interesting, actually, to hear Kristen speak as well about the Sufi and the patriarchal, because that would have been the case in the Catholic tradition that I grew up in, and it still is, in fact. A lot of, um, a lot of that has changed now, and women are more included in, in ceremonies and things, but it still basically is, you know, run, controlled, and organized by, by men. One of the interesting things that happened to me when I had my awakening, 
event, um, I was coming up to, how old was I? I was coming up to 40, and it happened, um, it took a whole week. Um, it was the most amazing week of my life. But what actually happened was I wasn't, I was given visions and experiences that I realized were later, were from a Hindu um, a Hindu background. For example, I saw visions of Hindu god deaths. Um, I saw, I had amazing visuals of things that I would never have um, seen before or have had any reference to. I heard the word Vishnu over and over. And when I heard that word, um, it had a very profound effect on on me and on the energy and on the Kundalini. And so it was very interesting because when I came to Kundalini Awakening, so, oh, here's Kristen. Welcome no, back, no, go ahead. Finish your thought. Finish your thought. Well, I, I'm just saying, when I came to Kundalini Awakening Systems first, it was interesting that many people were having experiences and awakenings in the context of their religious upbringing, whereas what I had experienced during my awakening event was I realized from a Hindu, my visions and all of that were not within the context of my upbringing. I was just explaining a little about that. Okay, continue, ah, well, Chris, because you'll get cut off again. <laughs> this is quite true. This is quite true. I mean, uh, even though you're a Christian in this life, you may have been a Hindu in another life, or a Buddha, or Buddhist, or a, uh, you know, any any number of uh, of, of uh, religions in the past, and and the Kundalini may draw off of that rather than your current belief system. And and this is this is the truth. And uh, and this is also something for you to con- consider. And so really take as much judgment for other religions out of your out of your uh, expression and your feelings because you may have been that Hindu, you may have been that Buddhist, you may have been that Christian, you may have been that Islamist. You know, don't have a judgment for belief systems. Let people have the freedom to believe as they as they need to believe at this time because there's more to their story of having a belief system than what meets the eye. They had you know, many people are, are working through karma. So they you know, as they work through karma they're they're uh, ex- you know, they're guided towards a very specific belief system rather than choosing that. So, you know, let's look at people that are born into a religion, born into Islam, born into Buddhism, born into Christianity. Uh the, the, the choice that they made was before they took the body. That's when they made their choice. So, you know, in, in, that, in that pre-incarnate experience, you know, they, they figured out that, oh, okay, for me to, to burn some of this karma, I've got to be born a Christian or I've got to be born an Islamist or, you know, any of the, any of the religions that are there. So, uh, yeah, Vishnu is Sanskrit, Tim. Yep, it is, it is. It is well. It's it's not all about sound. Vishnu is is uh, you know like the the foundation of the universe. Uh, but uh, you know these things are are you know what you were saying, Amelia, was quite correct, and uh, which which moves me into let's see. So, <laughs> folks, you know I'm going to have to leave this one at an hour. I'm sorry for all of the in- interruptions, but uh, I, I'm going to have to let this go. I know it's going to cut me off really quick. So I want to say thank you to Amelia. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And if you have an interest, give me, uh, give me an email at uh, kfireforall, that's K-F-I-R-E-F-O-R-A-L-L at yahoo.com, and we can continue this topic or I'll move on to another one. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Have a great, beautiful day or night, depending on where you are. Thank you, Amelia, for your help. Bye-bye. Oh, you're welcome. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.